Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepezani. Here are your top stories this Tuesday. In South Africa, scientists could have a breakthrough with a new study that could bring them closer to a HIV vaccine. Two South African scientists at the Center for AIDS program of research, led by Professor Salim Abdul Karim, claim to have discovered a vulnerability in the virus that enables the body to produce a broadly neutralizing antibody response. Health Minister Dr. Aaron Moto Oledi and Science and Technology Minister Derek Hanekom have both congratulated the research team on their revolutionary findings. But Dr. Moto Oledi has urged people not to see this breakthrough as a reason to live recklessly. Joining us from London is Memory Sajikonye, who herself is HIV positive and works to support other people who have the virus. So Memory, has talking about your illness and supporting others helped you to deal with it? Um, yes, I, well, like you, like you know, I've been living with HIV. Well, I, I got my diagnosis in 2002, and uh, MYN today through peer support that's being supported by other people living with HIV. So I find sort of sharing my experiences, sort of helps other people who are finding it difficult to cope and to understand how HIV affects them. Well, I'm, op I mean, I'm very open about my status. I've, uh, I feel very free. And uh, I think it makes it, it makes me, it makes it easier for me to access any service that I inquire because I sort of upfront and forward about my status. And it just makes me feel like, you know, if other people can see that I've been where they are and uh, I am where I am now. I look okay. I do. I mean, I work full time. Um, my mother, my grandmother is in fact. So, I mean, you can just live a very normal life with, you know, with HIV despite, uh, any myths or whatever people have, as long as you can access treatment. Yeah, so what kind of work do you do to help um, those people that are HIV sufferers at the moment? Okay, my day-to-day -day job is uh, working for an HIV treatment advocacy uh, network, which is uh, sort of advocating for people to access treatment mm -hmm. in the UK and uh, around Europe. And I'm also a volunteer with uh, several charity, uh, with the charities, especially the ones that help women, and like almost like a peer support worker uh, for other women and anyone else living, you know, with HIV. Sort of, you know, making them understand that you know they can still just live a very normal life, not to worry about you know the future, as long as they're able to take their drugs correctly and they're prescribed by their doctor, never to miss treatment, always be able to be confident and sure about what's being asked about them and being able to ask the doctor what problems they are likely to have. Just being able to talk to your doctor nicely can make your relationship and treatment outcomes much better. Yeah, we've discussed um, on, the, on the news today about a breaking story that doctors in South Africa feel they could be close to finding a cure. Is this realistic or would you, um, you know, find that there's any conditions in this kind of discovery that they made? Well, I mean, any cure, I mean, cure is the, the HIV cure is the, like the buzzword these days in the HIV sector. It's possible, but it's not very, it could be possible, but it's quite complex. So before we get very excited, there's, I mean, it's quite complex. There have been a few individual cases and studies of a few people who have been sort of cured, but the process is quite complex and uh, it will take some time and a, a while for people to sort of, for you to be rolled up, uh, you know, nationwide or all over the world. But it's very exciting that there's such development. In the last 30 years, we never knew could have such, I mean, we could, we could be talking about a cure in 2012. Yeah, you know, the message from the doctors is that the, whether they, they, they find the cure or they don't find the cure, that people might still be careful. You know, how important is it to educate people on safe sex? It is very important to sort of let people understand the importance of sex or of sex sex. Sex means uh, people being able to use condoms when 
treatment for those people, I mean, some women who still want to have children, and it has been proven that treatment can work as prevention. So that's another good point. And I think so just telling people to have, like, health, sex lives, you know, like, just be healthy, make sure you get checked all the time. If you see, risk is always goes, it's best to go and get a test. So you stay negative, if you are lucky enough to be negative. And you know, if the but the vaccine is created, or if it was created, how many people would actually have um, access to it? You know, considering the cost and um, you know people that would actually have the time to get it. You know, because for something like this, you know that it will cost a lot of money. You know, so how many people realistically would be able to get um, the medicine? Okay, I mean, if you look back uh, ten years from now. The cost of HIV treatment was about $10,000 a year per person. And because of campaign and pressure from the activist groups like ourselves, we have driven the cost of treatment down in, uh, in developing countries to almost like $172 a year for some tablets. So I think it might start off as expensive, and once it's proven it's working, we have to, I mean, as activists, we have to pressurize the companies that develop the, uh, the vaccine to lower the price because if there's demand for a drug then the price should go down thank you very much for your time and memory and hopefully i'll speak to you soon thank you you're welcome in other news last week atv news reported the story of a police officer who was stabbed and stoned outside a nightclub in zimbabwe the suspect known as zibusiso mangena or z is thought to have killed 30 year old constable mamini mini uh, stabbing the policeman three times in his chest. Mamini Mini was trying to break up a fight at a at Crime Matangwani nightclub located at Pakama shopping center. Police are appealing to members of the public for any information on the suspect. In Malawi, police have used tear gas to break up a protest by students of Chansopa Secondary School. The students who took to the streets of Lelongwe are angry with the government for late payments of their teachers' salaries. Frustrated teachers at the school have boycotted classes for almost two weeks. This is the second protest and on Friday police arrested a number of students, some were allegedly beaten and tear gas was used. Today police have arrested one man after dispersing students with tear gas and claimed they have calmed the situation. In London, a Zimbabwean student has been stabbed to death the victim, 20-year-old Harold Mazeremwe, was at a party in, in the southeast of the city when he was killed. Mazeremwe was a student of law and business in England and had a promising football career, having a trials at Premier League team Queen's Park Rangers. The 26-year-old Delaney Barnett appeared before magistrate yesterday. The British police paid tribute to Mazeremwe, describing him as an immaculate individual of good character adding that he was an innocent victim who was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. In showbiz news, Zimbabwean jazz star Dudu Mahenga has revealed that she is being investigated by police after she allegedly ran over and killed a pedestrian. The 32-year-old says she has admitted charges and is waiting her first court date. Mahenga said she could not comment further about this incident as it could affect the trial. Today's photo of the day has been awarded to Tari Tali Brown, who sends us loads of great pictures. You could appear on our screen if you send your photos to our ATV Facebook page. Thank you for watching and have a good evening.